ultra-processed foods make you gain fat without extra calories? New study breakdown next. So a new study just got published in Cell. And for example, the hot takes out on social media have been something like ultra-processed diets make you gain weight even without excess calories or calories don't matter. Even Science Daily said why ultra-processed diets make you gain weight without excess calories or, or something of that nature. I'm paraphrasing. Well, I'm going to tell you that this study does not support those claims and they are misinterpreting and misrepresenting what it actually found. And when you actually comb through the raw data, it tells a much less sexy story. So I read through this paper and I, I'm not going to say it's a bad paper. It wasn't a bad paper. I thought it was a good study design and I thought they found some interesting things, but it is not the hot takes that you're reading on social media. So first of all, let's dig into what the study was. So they were looking at people consuming ultra processed diets versus unprocessed diets. And they did what's called a two by two crossover design. Their intervention period for each diet was three weeks long. So that means they had people do three weeks of a unprocessed or minimally processed diet and three weeks of an ultra processed diet. Now they define that as over 75% of the calories coming from ultra processed foods. And they did provide the participants with this food. Now each subject consumed each diet. So this is what we call a crossover design. So they did three weeks of either diet followed by a 12 week washout period and then three weeks of the other diet. And they randomized the order. So that means that even if there were like crossover effects from the diet where like results from one diet were affecting the others, they randomized the order so that half of the participants consumed the ultra processed diet first and half consumed the unprocessed diet first. So any crossover effects would be theoretically equal between groups and you can kind of assume that any differences between these were due to the treatment and not due to crossover effects. Now you may wonder why did they have every participant consume both diets with a washout period? Why would they do that? Well, there's a couple of strengths to this design. The first is each person acts as their own control. When you do just parallel design where you're comparing one group of people to another group of people, there are differences in lifestyle, there are differences genetically between these people, and you, you can't control for every single difference. So by using each person as their own control, you're essentially getting rid of these differences. So that strengthens the study. Plus, each person now accounts for two data points versus one. So you're basically powering up your study. And just my personal opinion, I think their design is totally appropriate. And I think a 12 week washout period is well beyond what they needed to get rid of any like bleed over from another treatment. Within each diet, so minimally processed and ultra processed, they had people consuming adequate calories or excess calories. Now to determine adequate versus excess calories, they use the Schofield equation. Now the Schofield equation basically is a way to approximate your resting energy expenditure. They then took this calculation, added uh, a multiplier to it based on activity level, and then approximated their energy expenditure. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. It's a, an appropriate way to approximate energy expenditure. And then they said for the adequate calorie group, they set that at their, basically their energy balance. So their maintenance calories, what it takes to maintain their body weight. And for excess, they simply added 500 calories on top of that. You had an arm where people were consuming unprocessed or minimally processed diet at maintenance or 500 calorie excess or a ultra processed diet at maintenance or in a 500 calorie excess. The results were difficult to interpret because they used a box and whisker plot. And I honestly, I don't know why they didn't put some of this data in a table or do a table plus a box and whisker. Now, a box and whisker, basically the ends of the box uh, represent the 25th and 75th percentile. And then the line that they used was the median. Median is not the same thing as mean or average. So median is simply the middle data point. But you can have a middle data point that is quite a bit off your average. And in this case, that was the case for some of this data. For some of it, I think it's very appropriate for some of the things they're measuring. But for things like their calorie consumption, it made it really difficult to see what they were 
actually doing. And I had to go through some supplementary tables to actually find some of this raw data to try and find the averages. Because for some of this stuff, I just don't think the visual representation is better than the raw data. So that's, I guess, a small gripe I have with it. But let's go to the, the results. What were the meaningful results? And so I calculated these myself based on the raw data, because again, the box and whisker was a little bit difficult. You're kind of eyeballing it. So when it comes to changes in body weight, none of the groups gained significant body weight. So this headline of ultra processed diets make you gain weight or gain body fat without an increase in calories. This is false. This is false based on this data. The unprocessed adequate dietary group lost 1.3 kilograms over three weeks. The unprocessed excess group, so plus 500 calories, lost a kilogram over three weeks. So this is already kind of weird, okay? But okay, maybe, maybe this unprocessed diet does something with weight loss. In the ultra-processed diet, the adequate diet gained 0.05 kilograms. It was not statistically significant. So they maintained their body weight. The excess group gained a non-significant 0.2 kilograms. So no, they didn't gain weight. They didn't gain fat. And this is with increasing their calorie intake, 500 calories above their maintenance with a primarily ultra-processed diet. So this just, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Then if we look at actual changes in fat mass, the unprocessed adequate group lost about 1.1 kilograms of fat mass over three weeks. And the excess group lost 0.8 kilograms of fat mass. And this wasn't statistically different, I don't believe, between these two numbers. The ultra-processed diet adequate lost basically 0.1 kilograms. The ultra-processed diet at maintenance lost a non-significant 0.1 kilograms of fat mass. And the ultra-processed diet excess gained a non-significant 0.1 kilogram excess. Now, I want to point out something here. There was no difference, I don't think, statistically, between adequate or excess, where they're supposed to be increasing calories by 500 calories in each group. They did provide the food to participants, which is a benefit. Now, when I looked at the, the calories that they did not consume, it appears, and I, I had to guesstimate because they didn't provide the raw data and it's a box and whisker plot, but it appears that the unprocessed diet fell short of consuming all of the calories provided by about 200 calories compared to the ultra processed diet. Now, again, I wouldn't make a big deal out of this if their numbers made sense. But what we should theoretically see is we should see whether it's minimally processed, unprocessed or ultra processed. If they're eating 500 calories more, we should see an increase in weight or an increase in body fat in, in both situations, or at least one situation, we don't see it for either. None of them gained significant weight. Now, there wasn't a statistical difference in the amount of calories basically left over unconsumed. It was a p-value of 0.12, which you could argue is heading towards a trend. But this, this data to me, I don't know what to make of it. And I actually found that markers of inflammation went up in people consuming the unprocessed diet and a marker of anti-inflammatory effects, IL-4, went down in the minimally processed diet compared to the ultra processed diet. So I don't know what to make of that. Some of this stuff doesn't make sense. Now, I will say in single studies, sometimes you can have data that just doesn't make sense. And that's why we don't place tons of weight on single studies because sometimes random stuff just happens. If you inject me with truth serum and ask me what I really think, what do I really think happened? What I really think happened is when people know they are being monitored, they change their behavior. So I think people know they're being monitored. They know they're being provided food from researchers and they ate less. Additionally, uh, minimally processed diets and unprocessed diets are more satiating. And they showed that the group consuming the minimally processed or unprocessed diet had a greater fiber intake. I defer to Occam's razor here, which is this is a free living study, even though the food was provided, the simplest answer is probably true, which is the people consuming the unprocessed or minimally processed diets simply ate less calories because they were more satiated. If I had to like venture into any other guess, there was a significantly higher level of saturated fat versus mono and polyunsaturated fat in the ultra processed diet. And there are some research studies showing 
that polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats may improve body composition and energy expenditure relative to saturated fat intake. So that is a possibility. I also think it's funny that everybody makes a big deal out of seed oils. They're in processed foods. Um, well, actually, uh, saturated fats are, are high in processed foods too. So um, yeah. And again, if we're going to speculate on mechanisms, uh, I would guess that it's probably the calorie intake, fiber, and maybe the difference in saturated versus polyunsaturated fat. But again, the take home here, ultra processed diets did not increase body weight, even when they were quote unquote overfeeding them. And if we look at some of the more tightly controlled trials, like from Kevin Hall in 2019, a study at the NIH where they were in a metabolic ward and they were able to track every single thing they ate and look at their energy expenditure. What they found is when they switch people from a minimally processed diet to an ultra processed diet, they spontaneously ate 500 calories more per day and they gained body weight. And the amount of body weight they gained was in line with the excess calories they were consuming. And there was also another more recent study looking at kind of a similar design, two by two crossover design, uh, ultra processed versus minimally processed uh, over an eight week time period. And they basically found that people consuming the minimally processed diet ate around 200 calories less per day, which, oh, by the way, is about what I estimated the difference was between the minimally processed diets in this study versus the ultra processed diets. These folks found about a 200 calorie difference per day, which corresponded to the differences in weight that they observed. So now, everyone stop. Here is what I am not saying. I am not saying that you should eat an ultra processed diet if you want to lose weight. It is not a good idea to consume a lot of ultra processed foods because they are not very filling. They're easy to over consume. They have higher amounts of saturated fat and they have less fiber. All of those things mean that a minimally processed diet is a better idea if you want to lose body weight and body fat. However, saying that this is not a calorie issue or that this shows that the laws of thermodynamics don't work, this study does not support that. So I'm really interested to see more research in this area. I know this video is pretty long and in-depth, but I felt like it was worth deep diving into on this particular study because it is getting a lot of press. But again, the headlines and social media hot takes are wrong as per usual and not supported by the actual freaking data. All right, guys, if you like these sorts of breakdowns, make sure you check out my research review reps where we break down studies like this in a way that's easy to understand every single month and give you the straight facts with no BS. Catch you next time.